Well, hello and welcome back, everyone. And um, we're very excited today because we're going to do something that we've never done before. So, and, and we're going to do it live. So, and the, the best way to do something that you're not done is in front of loads of people. So why not? So um, welcome to you all. And welcome to our team of expert traders. Um, hi, Ellie. Hi, um, Lionel. And hi, Jonas. And also, hi in the background, Darren, who's yeah. uh, just going to switch on his webcam in a second. But hi, all of you. And welcome to our usual attendees who come up and say hi on the questions area. Hi, Sharon. Hi, Dan, Jay, and Sergio. And <laughs> Costa del Newcastle is, is boiling hot, obviously, today. So what we're going to do is, as you've probably seen from the notes, because this is why you've turned up, we're going to try and experiment because over the last three or so weeks, we've been looking at various techniques in Redshift. And today we are going to do a, an everydays. We're going to do something live and we're just going to jump in between each different artist and um, to kind of replicate what, what might happen if you were doing stuff in production. So <laughs> this is, possibly a slightly less polished than normal approach that we've done but you know that's why not we'll have a go at it and it, that's half the fun because then you get to see what everyone thinks in terms of their creative process so i think that's that's one of the fun things to do about this so just whilst we get ready have a think about what you'd like us to do because we're also going to be taking ideas from the floor if you like so shout from the gallery and just let us know what you'd like to see as we go along and then we'll, we'll see all what we end up together. And um, we, we might avoid rigging an eight-legged octopus, for example, just because we've only got an hour to do this in. Oh no, all the suggestions are going to be octopus now. <laughs> or octopodes, because that's the actual correct plural, but that's a whole different story. Anyway, because it's Greek, not Latin. So quickly moving on from this week in grammar, um, just a couple of quick things before we start. And that is that we, we have, as usual, we have lots of sessions going on. If you go onto the Maxon events page, then, oops, here we go, the events page here, go into news and events. And here we go, we can see a news events like so. Then you can see all the different things that we're going, we're having running um, this week and over the next few weeks, including Ellie and Matt's next session on the beginners workshop for cinema 4d and chad and nick's session on particles as well so please feel free to watch those plus we've got our usual recordings if you go to the youtube site then you can catch up with the recordings just go to youtube.com and search for max on training team and you'll find up all the stuff there great um and then also there we've got links in the PDF handout, which is in part of the, 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 uh, the webinar software download. So if you're in the actual interface, you'll see a button that says handouts and in there is this PDF. So in there is the link to the, um, all the things that we're mentioning in the last few webinars, including Lionel's amazing course on Udemy, where he's giving us all 80% off. So thank you for that again, Lionel. And just under that, there's the link to go and get your free T-shirt. And there's the code for it too. That code gets you into that link. And all you have to do is pay for shipping. So please have a look at that. And just very quickly, um, there's some recent news. You may or may not be aware that Redshift was updated last week and it now supports open color and has ACES workflows on it. So we are looking into doing a whole session on this and do a whole program because this is too big just to cover in a few minutes at the start of one of these sessions. So that we're going to be sharing more about that very shortly in the next week or so. And also, if you haven't seen it, head over to ProLost, which is the blog by our creative director, Stu Mashwitz. He's got a fantastic explanation of this whole concept of um, looking at correct color on your screen or incorrect color and making choices between it. So I would recommend uh, having a look at that and then we'll add that to links and we'll post them as also in the questions as we go along. Great. So, and we've, <laughs> we've had already, um, Jay suggesting use Redshift lights to the light quads and using a skin service shader. There we go. <laughs> so there's, there's something to think about as well. And um, also, Let's see, go back to the main topic here in case you missed it. We're going to do an everydays today to, to just see how far we can get doing one scene. 
And by the way, this image here that we got on the screen was one that, or three images that Ellie put together when she was coming up with ideas possibly that we could cover, but not necessarily that's where we'll end up. But this is an interesting take on, I think it's the same set, isn't it, Ellie? Just with three different treatments in it. Yeah, pretty much. It's just like um, a bit of like a room set up uh, with a camera. And I just thought I'd try and fill it with um, some cool stuff as much as possible and just like mess with the textures. That was more like I spent more of the time on like lighting and texturing than I did on actually creating um, or modeling the scene. But yeah, Excellent. Fun. <laughs> it's more of a rose gold, isn't it? Yes, I was obviously like feeling a certain color theme that week because <laughs> they all came out of three different days. Excellent. Right, cool. Because we've only got an hour, let me throw the screen over to one of you. Can I uh, throw the screen to you, Jonas? Make you yeah. a presenter. Sure. Here we go. So we'll make a start on this. Greg okay. loves that colour scheme, by the way, Ellie. <laughs> Cheers, Greg. Maybe today oh, I might add go. a bit more in. We'll see. So the first so of we all, got, have we got the first the first request for colour scheme, possibly. I don't know. Yeah, we, we can do that. Um, totally. So um, as Simon already mentioned, um, the later versions of Redshift um, now have ACES and color IO, uh, open color IO support. And um, the thing is, it's uh, switched on by default, but maybe many of you don't want to use it. So the, the first thing I want to show you is um, how to go back to what we had before because if you go the aces way you have to um do well you have to adapt your whole pipeline to the aces workflow and that's something we cannot cover in this uh, webinar here so let me switch it off and um i i'm here in a new scene i just go to my render settings set it to redshift and then i go to the advanced tab and here under globals you can see that the rendering color space by default is set to ACES CG. And I'm gonna set this to scene linear rec 709 sRGB. That's what um, used to be the uh, default before. So we're gonna do that. And we're also going to adjust the view to untone map. And now we are back at what we had before. Um, because if you, if you do ACES and you, don't know what you're doing. It's uh, the images appear a bit dark um, by default. So I just wanted to show you how to switch it back to what we had before. And now we're going to start. And there were already a lot of uh, things uh, coming in, um, but I don't think there was a real hero uh, hero object suggestion yet. So I, I would just um, suggest that um, we, well, I asked you to write your favorite letter. And uh, I'm going to take the first one and model something out of it. So just type something in. I'm going to take it. Oh, S. Cool. So what can we do with S? Sharon votes for S. <laughs> Shocker. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Right. Um, yeah, do we want to go? Maybe, maybe also um, a second uh, suggestion: um, a font. Just throw in what? a font. A font. A font. Just uh, like Arial Comic Sans Times New Roman. Please not Comic Sans, but I think we can handle it, anyways. So, if Papyrus. you add something, <laughs> which was that? Papyrus. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, is, is that even a, well, we, we can go with that, sure. Okay, so let's, um, oh God. <laughs> let's create a text spline. And I'm gonna set the text to S and make it aligned in the middle. And then we're gonna choose Papyrus. The, the cool thing about that is that the shape of this can also. Here we go. Oh, God. <laughs> That's cool. Um, 
Yeah, so what can we do with that? That's actually not as slick as I wanted it to be, but hey, I mean, I think it's you are allowed to change it. It's, it's okay if you want to change it. <laughs> no, I want to go with this one. Okay, what I do I is um, I'm going to extrude it first. So I'm going to hold down Alt um, while I select, or while I have the text line selected, and then I create the extrude in order to extrude it. And I think for now it's a little bit too much. So let's go with. You know, I thought it was pretty cool, like Jonas, when you uh, drew one from a spline when we were like practicing this. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, but that's not the request, is it? Well, now now I asked um, for a font and now I got one. I think I, I now have to, yeah, yeah. to stick to that. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Simon. Just, just make my own rules. Thanks, Simon. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm going to the caps and I'm gonna increase um, the size here and maybe invert it because I think that's that can I like be quite that. cool and maybe maybe let's decrease the offset here something yes, like please. that and and then there was something I I saw in one of Lionel's sessions where he just threw that into a volume builder uh, here we go a volume builder and I just decrease the voxel size to two, maybe to one, maybe to 0 0.5, something like that. And in the extrude, I'm going to bring up the segment count. Let's bring it up to 10 to um, make this a little bit rounder here. And now I'm going to make this. Um, or turn it into geometry. That was the wrong one. I need the volume measure. So here we go. That's cool. And I think I can smooth it a little bit, but just a little bit. That's way too much. I think a voxel distance of one is okay. And also the strength at well, something around this here. Is also fine. So here we go. That's what do, what's the plan? What's the plan in terms of us sharing? You know, do you do you have like a time limit to do something well, and then you hand it uh, off to we somebody else? But, um, We've been taking I turns, think... just sort of whenever someone comes up with an idea, then we toss it over to them. Um, and we're using—I don't know if you mentioned this—we're using Dropbox to share not the yet files. because I didn't save oh. yet. Um, so I'm going to save this. Um, to that Dropbox, that was the rehearsals. Here we go. Go in here and giving away all the secrets. Yes. I mean, we so, didn't practice at all. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, we did, but every time uh, we came up with a different thing every time. So, um, a good suggestion. It could be a mountain. If you were zoomed in really closely, and then that yeah. you could zoom out, then reveal that actually no, it's an S. Maybe maybe yeah. you could use the scatter tool to put some foliage on there or something. Yeah, I was actually yeah. thinking this would be cool if we laid it down and then it became sort of like its own landscape that we were exploring, and then when we had that wide shot, then we'd see it was like the letter S or something. Uh, oh wow, well, twist. It's an S. It work. Just writes itself. Here we go. Here we go. And then <laughs> maybe I I'll start by well adding a landscape as well. So here we go. That's the landscape. I'm gonna um, bring the well. I'm gonna untick borders at sea level, and I'm gonna bring down the uh, size yeah, in y yeah. direction a little bit. And maybe um, I'm, I'm scale it down a little bit as well. You know Something what would be cool like... is if this sat inside of that landscape. You know, it sort of like pushed the land down. You know where it sits? Down or outwards? Because right now it's a little bit more mountainy. 
Mm -hmm. I'm thinking of um, uh, Collision Deformer. That could work. Yeah. Do you want to do that? Sure. So I'm going <laughs> to say. <laughs> and as I hit the. Got to do it. <laughs> that's, hey, that's the rule of every day's club. If you suggest it, you've got to do it. <laughs> yeah. So, Darren, do you have it? I am starting. <laughs> so, as you as you can tell, I'm having an issue with my webcam. I tried restarting. Um, that didn't help, and uh, and then you, I uh, forgot to start up Cinema. So it's initializing plugins. I, I I like your optimism of being able to do one of these without the software open. That, that's truly an advanced level. Well, I mean, you you could uh, you could uh, modify everything in text edit. That would be possible. That's true. That is true. I think Darren's having some tech issues at the moment. Yeah. I think he's just gone offline. Your audio sounds very funny, Darren. Well, that, that is indeed funny. I think, I think I should continue for now. Uh, Darren, do you, do you want to log out and, and uh, log in because you you sound like uh, Mickey Mouse? Chip monkey at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I mean, we can spend the we can spend the rest of, our, of the hour just listening to Darren. Which would also be funny. Okay, so um, Ellie or Lionel, who wants to? Wants to continue. I don't mind, Leonel. Do you want to take it, and then I'll I'll take it after. That's a you definite you... bat, isn't it? <laughs> over to you. Over to you, Leonel. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, I can't hear you. Lionel, I can't hear you. Seems like you're muted. I've returned. Can, let's switch. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? We can also hear Darren again. Excellent. Perfect. Back. Okay. All right. So yes, I was downloading uh, the S. Is it done? Yes. So let's go to Redshift and I'm going to open it. And here it is. All right. So what do we want to do with this? Um, so yeah, we could add some trees. So we could use for that. I'm going, yeah, you, I think you can show. Yes, that you're showing. I'm sorry. Can you see? Uh, do you see the webinar? Uh, the um, webinar uh, stuff here on nope, the right? No, no, oh, no I don't right. see that. I wasn't sure about that. So you can, we can use here our asset browser to use uh, to find some foliage. So do we have some tree here? Let's go to object, and this is tree. I think we have to look for. I remember, yes, we have some palm tree. We can even hear palm trees, right? Okay, so we have coconut palm tree, like uh, those, like that. We'll have to convert the material also, but we'll see, we'll see that later. So what I can do is maybe to use a few of the, a few of them. So we can use here our place tool to take this one and just put it here. So it's huge. But we can just change our size. So let's change here the size of our palm tree. And I don't know about this one. Do I'm going to create a cam also. So let's create a cam. So I can remember. Oh yeah, he's he's here, but he's just huge. So let's change the size. And do we have some? No, we don't have anything to, to change the size. So I'm just going to do it by hand like that. And we can go back here and place it here. All right. So it doesn't 
have the right, okay, no matter, and just do it by hand. Sometimes that's just the the easiest way to get exactly what you want is to, to do it by hand. Despite right. all the awesome to, to reset, coordinate um, the rotation. So I don't know why the placing tool doesn't work well for that, but you can just change the size. So this one is actually, yeah, it looks bonker. <laughs> <laughs> We can use this one. We can. This one, I think, is going to be placed uh, the way it should. So let's use it like that. Okay, that's better. Can change the size again and use again our placing tool. And we could use a few more like that. So control to duplicate, and we can just rotate like this. We can change the size and do a few like this. And we have all the trees. So maybe we can also just use some, maybe make them all smaller than that. So I can just here take the size, reduce yeah. it. Yeah, I like that. I was thinking that it looked like they were sort of competing with the S when they were so big. You know what I mean? Uh, of course, this one is intense. I'm sorry? Yes. Uh, I, yeah, I was thinking when they were so big, it looked like uh, I was losing the S uh, behind it. So that's that's cooler, I think. And we can take this one. Yeah, this one, I need to, to uh, change the size like that. And then maybe we can try to use some, some, uh, some foliage. So, so maybe some grass, or I could use the scatter tool to just distribute all those trees. Uh, well, the distribute is easy. I just take this one, and then I can try here to use the scatter pen. Scatter pen, and we're going to change a few of the options. So maybe a much smaller radius like that, and the count will be right. I can just change, and again, no, it's fine. We have oh, that's the top. Okay. So I need to take this one as a reference again. Okay, that's better. And this is our scatter. So you can just go back, maybe use the scatter again, but with some more count inside and the splat spacing, well, just increase the radius. So this is like a South Sea Island atoll, isn't it? Which has <laughs> kind of been half submerged. Yeah, well, I already that's... know what I'm going to do when I when I take over. Uh, okay. Who's next? And then uh, when we're at the scatter, we can just change here to edit mode, uh, so we can use our placing tool back, uh, so we can place it better. So this one just on top on another tree, that's not <laughs> what we want. So that's better. And then I can change the size. See, it's pretty easy to, to change. We can rotate and so on like that. Yeah, we could even keep the, the original orientation so that all of them point upwards. But I, I still like that, that they are going to the sides as well. It's a little bit more dynamic. And then we can just try to have a better frame of everything here. Leonel, could you, um, we have a question from Sharon. Can you just show how you might get those trees more upright than off the face of the poly? Well, the, the problem with the place tool is going to offset to, to use the normals here, but we can use, uh, uh, let's try for, yes. So I'm going to exit this camera and use this one. And with the, here we can just, uh, make it so I'm going to edit to make it editable C hitting C so now I have access to this one individ individually and this one here I can change the coordinate and let's go back to the original coordinator and it, I can just use here our place tool using the keep on wire so now it's going to now it's going to keep upright so Let's keep it, yeah, I guess maybe that's because it's an instance. Because here, if I just keep the normal, let's use reference axis. 
All right, no. Well, I don't know maybe, what I'm doing now. I'm maybe just... you set it to custom. Yes. Let's, let's try custom as well. Let's try here. Custom on Y, okay. Yeah. Okay, now it works. It, it's, okay. it's it should work with the, mm -hmm. like I did. And now they're just sitting all right. And you can do that with uh, some other. So here, control, I'm going to add more. I can change the size. Let's go back to our view here. So I can add one here and maybe try to frame better the shot. I'm going here in the filter. No, it's the same, same safe frame. So we can see better all this. You know, you have all the tool here in the camera composition. So we could, could use the grid to compose this, but I'm not going to, just wanted to show you. And we can maybe frame this better. And well, have we converted the materials yet? No, so that's okay. something you could do very fast. So my, my, my materials are all this. I'm just going to take a look here to the materials. So we have color, reflectance, pump, alpha. That should work. Yeah, do we have a proper color? Yes, so what I'm going to do is just select all and we're going to redshift. And we can try here tools, material, utility uh, tools, and convert and replace uh, uh, convert material, convert all materials because I'm not sure it's going to do uh, this one is dangerous because I can lose yeah. just uh, all the file or the the link. So we're going to convert all the material. So that's what I like to do also, so I can see them the redshift and the original one side by side. So if I have to tweak it, I have that reference. Uh, that's better. So let's go back to the shadow graph. So yeah, I went back to the shadow graph. Yeah, I'd accidentally change my view. So for this to lock my view, let's use rigging the protection tag. All right, and here let's take a look. So it looks all right, reflection and the roughness. So we have a map the reflection. We don't have anything for the for the diffuse. Let's take a look at the original one and in the reflectance. I'm curious about the alpha channel. Are we yeah, alpha gonna channel. do a spray? No, there's that's, nothing in the alpha channel. Yeah, that's weird. Are they all are all the leaves like that? All the leaves materials? That's very strange. Mm -hmm. And this one also doesn't have any alpha. Okay, so well, anyway, so let's go back to the palm leaf. It, it looks it looks okay, huh? I think. Most yeah. of them, we lost the bump also. We don't have anything in the bump either. That's definitely strange. You see, there's no texture. Yeah, I'm, 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 there's something wrong. Yeah, I'm checking it out in the asset browser to see if there's like, in fact, dependencies for that stuff. And yeah, I see. Uh, Okay, in the coconut bark, do you see a bump map in there? Coconut bark. Yeah, there is one in the bump, bump texture. Okay, okay. Okay, that's strange. Well, it's, so let's let's assume assume it's it's work, uh, it, it's working. Yeah. I'm just going to put. I'm going to hand over. So we could use here on the um, on the object. Uh, let's use the sun and sky uh, rig. So if you use the second sun and sky rig, you definitely need to use some uh, GI. And on the um, this version of Redshift, you automatically have the GI. But you have an older version. And I think we'll just wait, brute force, brute force. And that should do it. And now if I go back here to our... Yes, there is some some metal missing so we did, you did that right. conversion but i don't think that the actual materials yes were updated. Right. of course so now we just need so one quick way to do it i'm going to assume again uh, everything is, is fine yes uh, Duran is right because i didn't replace any material so you can take this one you go here alt okay and then you're going to do for the other 
So I'm going to take the risk and assume that everything is fine. RS co coconut, RS bark, and I'm going to replace everything. RS coconut bark. Yeah. RS. So to be clear, what uh, Lionel is doing is he's replacing one material with another, um, so that uh, he doesn't have to go into all the separate tags and all the objects. And here with Alt, I'm going to replace everything. And now that's it. And that's much better. Perfect. I think okay. Ellie's up. Ellie, yeah. you still have that idea? Uh, the cool thing, yeah. because it's all on the um, asset brother, I can hand it over to Ellie without um, collecting all the, the texture with the all older version of Semaphrody. I would have to use self project with asset, but here I don't need it to, uh, I don't need to do that. So let's do it. I'm going to just save the project and put it back uh, in the, um, in the Dropbox. In, in case anyone's just joined us, um, we're doing a, a live kind of, let's see what we can make together, every day's project. And the, the theme we got to was basing on an S in Papyrus. And thanks for those suggestions, Sharon. And we've kind of laid it flat and are doing stuff to it. So we got palm trees um, going on top at the moment and whatever crazy stuff Ellie's got planned for this next. Sure. <laughs> I can tell from your expression that you think, oh, I'm going to do something crazy with this. Okay, right, cool. Let me share my screen. Da -da -da. So we just created a new file, right, uh, Lionel? Yes, yeah. it's uh, S0001. Right. Always um, safer. Do you have okay. it? I just tried to share my screen. Um, there we go. There we go. Right, can yep. everyone see my screen? Yes. Yes. Cool. Right. Yeah. So everyone was like reading my mind as um, Lionel was putting those palm trees on there, and I was like, okay, I'm definitely going to turn this into an island of sand, and then I'm going to turn the original like like bottom landscape into water. I hope that's okay, Jonas. Okay. So, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna make <laughs> when you have it back, you can change it. That's the, the joys of collabing. No, no, I I won't. Our deadline is in twenty eight minutes, so we have no, uh... don't, don't. I'm I'm already stressed enough doing this in front of other people. <laughs> no pressure. Um, okay, right. <laughs> okay, let no, me just imagine the client doing? approached you and said, I want an S in papyrus as an island, uh, and I need it to be finished in one hour. You'll be like, yeah, easy. The like, guys did that the other day. <laughs> okay, cool, right. So I've just got like my normal standard material and I'm going to throw it on there. Um, okay, so let me get myself some space. Let me see what's going on. Let me just stop that. Come on, little preview. Okay, I'm going to leave it. Right, okay, so I'm going to, I'm thinking I'm going to make this of like, with some noise with noises i think and let's just see let's see what it looks like so i'm going to just grab like a normal sand color which is going to be oh i don't know what color sand like that <laughs> Ooh, that's way too yellow Ugh. are there I'm any really sand for now are there any sand like bumps or anything in the asset browser? Uh, no, no, I looked. There. Okay. And so instead, I'm just going to use max on noise and I'm going to make it super small and I'm going to hope that it looks okay. I mean, it's going to look amazing. <laughs> is what I meant to say. Of course. <laughs> All right, cool. So I'm just going to plug the max on noise straight into the output so I can kind of see what's going on. Um, and and, 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 I'm just gonna like flick through some of these. I mean, they're gonna, let me make them smaller first so I can actually see what's going on. Oh, I'm gonna have to go real small. Um, hmm. Let me just see what they look like. Um, any you guys think that, okay? And now through the same right you know what i'm just gonna stick with like what was that one, one that we were using that, that you were like it's like oh my my favorite one at the moment yeah booyah 
mainly because it's called Mia. I like to say that word. Um, <laughs> How I'm going to make it a bit smaller. Oh. <laughs> Whatever sounds the coolest. <laughs> um, right, hang on. Let me make it a bit smaller again. There we go. Okay, cool. Right, so, so that looks okay. So let me plug this back into here. There it and is. Here it is. And I'm going to grab myself a bump map. And I'm just going to plug that into my input and that into my bump input. Beautiful. I know that's what you're thinking. Jason's got an interesting suggestion. Does the asset browser have sandpaper? That's just a general question as well. That'd be an interesting one. Should we have a look? I think there are yeah, some well, um, some procedural sand materials, but um, but this is yeah this is what I searched when I said when this is no what came up when I and but I mean you can always just like Google um, for texture maps that's why I do it's it's an interesting subject as well if if anyone's got suggestions about things that they would like to see that they probably would use all the time that aren't in there let us know because we know people we can get them added. <laughs> We know people. We do, indeed. <laughs> um, okay, cool, right. So I'm gonna leave the sand as it is, like maybe we'll we'll tweak it in a bit. But I'm now gonna do the water or the sea. Da -da -da. I wish the floor object worked with uh with redshift because that would I, that would be awesome. Mm. Yeah. The infinite one. Yeah. Oh, let me just name these. So is that my sand? It doesn't like to update, does it, at the moment? There we go. Sand. Right, okay, let me make some water. And I'm going to kind of cheat. I'm going to use a little preset to start with. And then I'm basically just going to do the same setup. Use the maximum noise. But I know exactly which one I'm going to use for this. Um, and I'm going to get a bump. Da -da -da. Right, I'm going to use ooh, da -da -da, this one. Yes. I realize I'm making a lot of sound effects, so I hope you're enjoying that. Sound effects. <laughs> Everyone makes sound effects when they edit. <sighs> I just forget that there's like a lot of people <laughs> kind of watching me do this. Um, okay, cool. So yeah, I just grabbed another max on noise because I'm gonna like make it look like there's ripples in in the water, and I yeah I've used this one because um, I think it looks really nice and it creates those nice little like pools. So I'm just gonna plug that back in there and plug that back into there, and it would be handy if I plug that into there as well. Hmm. Mm -mm -mm. Right, I need to stretch this. Yeah. So no, this one. Too strong. Yeah. Too much? Yes, a bit too strong there. I think it took too much contrast on the um, on the noise also. Yeah. So you're saying that the bump is too strong? Yeah. The, the, yeah. I, mainly, mainly it's uh, it's a matter of too too contrasty noise. Huh? Okay, cool. So let's get into here. Let me sort of like that. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Hello. Let's see. It's, it's hard. It's hard to tell without the. Uh... Uh, okay. Yes. It was only the noise itself. See, all those years that Lionel's been working for creative directors, now, now's your chance to turn the tables. <laughs> okay, what, what are you thinking? I'm this? thinking... So, what I used to do was... Uh, did you save this? I did not. You can know you me. save it? I want to <laughs> pick it up and see if I can... Oh, go on then. If I can... Sharon's got a question about um, using a ramp to adjusting the noise. Would you use a ramp for that, Ellie? Uh, yeah, yeah, you could do. Then you can sort of like um, clamp the black and white values as well. 
so yeah to be honest that's actually what I normally would do instead of adjusting um the noise itself uh oh I'm trying to share my screen but it won't let me don't we try and give it to you yes please there you go throw it at him can't show my screen. can't help but think about this needs a giant monster to kind of peering over the tree it's been nice and like peaceful got a nice little island okay. now it's like get a kraken out so we got <laughs> the land people flying everywhere <laughs> <laughs> give it over to simon we, we need <laughs> yes exactly There's, do we do we have a godzilla in the asset browser <laughs> well we've got a t-rex they're kind of related so I'm making this much greater, and I'll call this water surface. And let's see here. We've got some reflection, one, three, three. She might be cool here also. Oh, we got some dispersion. Okay, cool. Um, now what I want to do is underneath this, put like the bed you know like the sand bed under under it maybe we can see uh the sand through it in some places let's come out here let's show the line so as i scale this up we can there we go okay so there should be a bit of separation between yep so this will be um whatever ocean floor and a side comment uh, mm -hmm. for you darren and jess is asking just in case you get there is there a way to get a thumbnail preview of the noise you're editing in the shader graph window without plugging it into the output node but, so like let's go in here um like a thumbnail i you know i don't think so no, no. i don't think it either no yeah i think the, the easiest way is to create a shortcut for the um for this command um what, what is it called pipe pipe node into output or something what is the exact name or you you use the cinema 4d node system which has got the the solo um switch on each of the nodes yep Okay, where's our camera? There's our camera. Uh, let's start this render. So I took that same sand material and I put it on my ocean floor plane. It's just a, a very large scaled plane. Um, if we turn that off for comparison, then we just get that. And I do, hmm, I like this noise, but I feel like it's sort of, small and there should be other layers on it oh yeah definitely mm. go go for it you said it now let's see here let's see, see when you have more than one art director <laughs> um just for the sake of speed i'm going to turn off gi we'll get hardware ray chasing in here um and let's come back to the noise so we turn, so let's see, it was at contrast zero. Let's bring that down. It gets even, you know, it's pretty subtle. Yeah, there we go. So let, let's see if we put it at zero and then turn the bump str uh, strength down here, we could get a similar result to uh not exactly the same but to reducing the the contrast um but the scale right so let's see if we go over there it's going to get stretched that was 0.8 let's make this like uh oh okay i thought i was going to get a driver crash so that's a bit big hmm. you know what that's not 
it's not horrible. Do you like the the sort of stretching there, you guys? You should have that on the poster. It's not horrible. There you go. <laughs> Job done. I think that it's better. Okay. Maybe you could use one layer, another layer of, of noise on top of it. All right, so let's get a color layer in here. We'll send that out into the bump. And you know what? Let me switch my layout. Um, let's stop this. Let's go to my Redshift shader graph layout. Um, and let's see, so this will be the base. And then I'll just duplicate this guy. And I like FBM. Uh, so let's put that in layer color one. And so we can sort of see this. I'm going to go right out to the surface and start this back up again. Uh, OK, so on the FBM, that's the only noise we see right now. Um, if I, let's see. All right, let's play with the scale of it. I want something uh, sort of large and more homogenous. Yeah, let's try that. So let's check out some blending modes here. Uh, I should probably do this with uh, through the bump. So let's go ahead and check that out. And you know, alternatively, we could have two different bumps and do a bump blend with them. Average multiply. Uh, where is it? There's overlay. Hmm. Quick question whilst you're doing that, Darren. Is yeah. Sean has asked um, what our thoughts are about the redshift sky, and you use that a lot. Um, the redshift sky, it, the dome light. Yeah. Um, that's it's actually, kind of, it's a go to largely really, isn't it? it? It is for me. Um, yeah. I think she's referring to the sun and sky rig. Yeah, yeah I, I think, think so. Because okay. this is what we were using in here. So I personally, um, uh, whenever I can, um, I'm using, um, HDRs in a dome light. Um, but well, it, it depends. It's uh, yeah. based on the situation. I recently uh, I made a scene with um the sun and sky, and it came out looking looking really quite nice. And I used like yeah. a portal light as well, for, like an interior scene. And it's, yeah, since then I'm like, oh, so I use a mix now. Yes, it's very yeah. interesting. If you just put the sun very down, or you you can get a sunset for very cheaper. Uh, the only problem you can't add cloud and and so on. It's always very clear sky, but it's uh, I think it's a good set for uh, for this mood here, because uh, yeah, which can also be good if you if you want clean reflections. You know, I mean, most of the time I add an HDR um, to a dome light just to just to get some variation in the reflections and so on. Um, but if you want it to be clean, then um, this is a nice go-to. And you just you just um, mentioned. Um, you know, you just mentioned the um, if you bring the sun down, that it's um, shifting towards red. You mentioned that red shift, <laughs> and uh, ta -da. it just writes itself, shift doesn't it? Down. Yeah. Oh, well, Lionel did it first. <laughs> <laughs> However, Greg um, did say we need a sunset. Exactly. Yeah. That's what I wanted Rotate to tell. That, that was my two-minute segue into this. <laughs> yeah, it's better now. The weather is. Yeah, yeah. The water it's is great. It's good. I feel like it's a little mirror-like. Well, I, I I don't mind it. It's it's cool for for this piece. I think. Yeah. Why don't you turn the ocean floor back on and see what it looks like now? Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's I, I, I quite that. like that. I forgot I turned it off. <laughs> okay, so it's super intense. Um, I'm going to well, move just, the floor down. Or just leave it. <laughs> or just leave it? 
What yeah, did you just, leave it? Just like, off? It. I, think, oh. I think, yeah, I think it was really nice without. Okay. Just thinking ahead slightly, but I think we also need to to make a feature of what the original shape was, because it, it kind of needs an animation to start off, say, on a frame like this, then to pull back and then view from above like a drone view to then reveal that it's an S. So then can, you can fit in that decision in the story. I'll I'll do the uh, the the fast version of that. So. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm, I'm going to get, so we already have that close up, right? So we'll say that this is the, uh, you know, the far shot, right? So we'll add that camera, we'll say, uh, yeah, far shot. And then with these two cameras, I'll this will be a close up camera. I'll select this one and then the other one. And then, I haven't done this in a while. And then I'll add the camera morph tag. And we get a third camera, which then, will morph or uh, blend between the two. So that's just a, like a starting point for, for that. Let's stop, let me go back here. Let me go file, save. I wish that we had something around the edges, you know, so it wasn't so straight up. Yeah, I would just um, bring up the, the sea level. The ocean floor. <laughs> yeah. Remodel? No, just lift up the ocean. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, uh, oh, wait, not the floor, the water surface. Yeah. Uh, Okay, let's see that one. I don't know. I'm sort of on the fence. Uh, but let me let me save this. No, it looks and... nice. Looks good. It's oh. cool. Cool. Thank you. Um, let's see. Who? I... Anyone got anything? Or we? we Can we cycling? get a sunset in there, glinting I can, in? I can take it. Rotate that yeah. sun. Let's see. Do I am I sending it to you or can you click on the share? Me? Here we go. I... And make presenter. Oh my broken camera image. Here we change. go. <laughs> so weird. now I just have to revert to saved. Yes. And now It should I'm work. Liking how it connects to all the all the materials so seamlessly. Just jumping, dumping that file in Dropbox and opening it up again. Yes, yeah, it's, it's incredibly fast. So let me bring down the. Well, do we want a sunset or a sunrise? Actually, most <laughs> of us similar. never have never sunset. seen a sunrise, but actually, sunrises are much more beautiful I'm gonna start, than sunsets. I'm going to start singing the. Uh, Sunrise, sunset, <laughs> sun. Oh, also, Jonathan just had an amazing shout. As you animate the camera movement. Someone needs All to put right. in a shark fin. Jonathan's just said it, and I uh -oh. think that's, like, that's such a shout. Shark fin. <laughs> Is there? A idea. Can I do that in here, setting up the time, or is that just something I have to? Yeah, you can use the the time tag. Huh? Oh, it's, it's much easier to just uh, take the um, the sun and just orient it the, the right way. It's so easy. Yeah. Okay. So like like so. You can you get you can move it wherever you want. Long, just... long shadows, and then I'm going to switch to global mode and just make this a little bit more like a backlight situation, something like that, maybe. Let's let's see if it if it looks good when I jump back into the camera here. Ooh, no, uh -huh. it doesn't. It doesn't. GI is off. So GI is off. Yeah. Yeah. So let's go back to well, GI 
we switch it back on, but still better. It's better, but not too. But what you can cool. do, Jonas, is just you just move the light uh, in just in front of you because yeah. the location doesn't matter, and you can orient it uh, yeah. easier. Let's. Oh my God! I'm doing the the mistake that everyone does in the beginning. Let me just unlock these and let's move it here. Here we go. And now I can rotate it even further. I feel like uh -huh. we rotate it a little bit to the side. And let's also see if we can. No, I think we, we have to go down a little bit here. So maybe so that we get these nice little. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I don't like it too much. The, the angle or the color? Um, it's the angle. Let me okay. switch it. Rotate it to the side somewhere. I think some something like that is actually better. Oh, I like that. I like seeing the tree shadow on, you know, in the foreground and yeah, exactly, exactly. Some light and shadow on the leaves, yeah. Okay, so do we have something for the for the background? Well, I, I think we have to to finish this up somehow. So one thing I also wanted to do is I wanted to select all of the. Uh, leaf textures and go to the materials base properties and maybe bring up the backlighting. Definitely, yeah. A little bit. This is a pretty cool one if you want to get like a, a fast subsurface scattering effect of of light. Um, yeah, uh, shining from the opposite direction you know i would also and like i would take that a step further and i would take that diffuse texture and i would um put that into the backlighting translucency um you know so that we're getting some of that leaf color variation coming through rather than a, a flat uh flat color and if we multiply that with, you know, a gray or something, or color correct, if we put a color correct on it, then we can make it lighter, or you know, less or more saturated. Because you know, like leaves have different; um, they look different on the front and the back. Um, yeah, I I uh, like to take care of uh, of the of the camera settings first. Cool. You do you. Um, so I'm going to add a redshift <laughs> camera here, uh, camera tag, uh, redshift tags, redshift camera tag. And I'm so disappointed I'm, my camera's not working. And I'm going to... You need to, a new camera tag, Darren. I do. Uh, we should do... So. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. Found in the job. So, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> How this work? We so have a tip job this. every time somebody says a pun at work. So far, it's full. Yeah, it's thanks full. to you. And it's all time of money. Yeah, it's oh, wait, full of my money. Yes, come on. Here we go. I need to set this one to here. And now I think I can bring up the bouquet. And well, let's play around with the with the physical settings here with the F stop and let's bring it down to let's say one. Is there something happening in here? I've had a couple of last minute suggestions um, for some some haze um, and from Cameron and Dan suggesting um, a crab crawling on the sand and maybe some depth of field. But we definitely if if we don't have time for those, we definitely got to get a shark fin in the water. <laughs> yeah, 
Um, then we then we can discuss for ten minutes exactly what type of surface that fin should have. I have a fiddler crab. Am I just not seeing it, or is it enabled is in the redshift tag? It, yeah. Oh, it's not enabled. Somehow I disabled it again. Good spot. Good spot. Thanks. Oh, nice. So nice I'm just going to derive the focus <laughs> distance and play with this one here. For some reason, it's not responding too well here. Yeah, you're not looking through the right camera. This is the CU camera. Yeah, yeah. And your tag is on oh, the. Yeah. That's that's it. Oh. And here we go. Oh, that's the yeah. yeah, field. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Okay, now let's go back. So live troubleshooting, that's good. Wow, did we make this really small? We no. did make this really small, yes. Okay. So let's go with an F sub of. And the COC is uh, it's pretty small. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah, Duff oh, is always looking good. Can we go? Yeah. Does somebody else want to do something else with this? I'd like to try it. You'd like to try it? Okay. Yep. There's a shark in oh. the asset browser. Oh, there is. There Simon, is. did you know that? <laughs> oh, Genius. Me. Brilliant. I see. We want to gonna... add, add the shark in, guy. I don't think we've jumped the shark just yet. Oh, uh. I'm just <laughs> throwing the screen at Leonel. You know, I didn't even know where that came from. Did you then... did you jump the Dropbox? Is it the S001? Yes. Still? I just I just uh, saved it with the same name. So you can just revert to save and then it's going to work. All right, here we are. So let's launch our stuff and then I'm going to play with the. Um, so I love to use the render view instead of the because we have all of this control already. And let's change. Ah. Okay, now now it's great. So maybe we could use some. Um, so here, yeah, about the um, the ACs. So if you use ACs, you can see it's see unturned. This is without. This is with ACs, and it looks better, I think, already. But maybe I'm partial to this. But it's um, it's interesting to have uh, to have this. And also in my case. Well, I don't know if I'm. No, I'm go not going to, uh, to to show it. And so maybe we could use. I would like to to play a bit with the. So I'm going to take again uh, the sun, uh, which is right here. I'm going to move it up. And okay, so this is the Z. I'm orientating like that. Okay, now I would like to to make some kind of sunset. Uh, so it's different mood, but let's uh, let's try. All right, so here it is. And now, oh, nice. Yeah, I'm feeling that. Yeah. With the sun, I can try to use. Uh, I have the interface. Okay, so here with the sun, what we can try to use is uh, on the. Okay, now it's on the sky. It's a bit confusing. So on the sky here, we can increase the sun scale. So it has a nice thing like that. And oh, now the bloom <laughs> and the streak. And maybe you can have a stronger streak like that. So it's it's all very no interesting. Thing. <laughs> well, now we did like one hour. Thing. <laughs> yeah, <some laughs> answer, why not? We did one hour of sharing the screen and so on. And if we just um, left it all at uh, Lionel's side, uh, it would have looked like this within the first 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah, 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah. What not He's been very, very calm and patient with us. 
So at yeah. the very beginning, I had no idea what to do. So I was a bit in a panic. And you have, with the turbidity, if we increase it, it's going to be even redder. And you can see here the ACs are, is doing wonder, I think. I love it because what was previously just blown out is much more smooth and natural. Yeah. And then really? what is blown out just feels I'm, right. Yeah, I'm a bit surprised. The untone is, is good, but it's, yeah, it's blown out, like you said. And this one is, is you see, it's more natural. We have some very gentle highlighter. And what I can do now is go to the sun and increase the sun intensity. So it's just going to be harder. And yeah, maybe I'm going to show this very quickly. If I go to the red shift in the, uh, so that's something um, I want to to uh, to give the credit to, where is it? Yeah, the globals. In the credits here, you can use some color open your uh, color configuration. And I have some in my R, ah, where is it? It's uh, some OCO config that uh, Sol Espinoza from Redshift uh, have created for uh, for all. And yeah, here it is. Huh? So now I have those ones. So this is the one with the, um, the color contrast uh, that I love. Uh, I showed you one of the webinar. Uh, it's going to add the filmic curve on top of it. So it's still ACs, but with filmic curve. And here using high contrast, we have even nicer rhythm result, I think. So yeah, the very high contrast is too too high, but you can see uh, the idea we have, we can go the other way also. So this is very nice. And something we can include, I think, in the file. And again, uh, give credit to, to Saul because he's the one who did that. That's really great. And well, that's, uh, that's interesting. Huh? And we still have the, the Kerma animation that during the... So did you animate the, um, the morph tag? So we, no. We need, yeah, no, we need I just to, got it in there. I, I don't think it's... it's uh... so just need to move it here. Yeah, and we are. And maybe we can you know, try. Can I ask you a question, Leonel? You know? How, how do you think that um, that ACES setting would reflect off, say, a, a glinting shark fin? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. hey, Leonel, can you save that? Save that real quick. I want, I'd like yeah. to. Like to you that. can add it, Aaron. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to drop it in. And... So you won't, you won't have those film and contrast, but uh, I do that, have that's... those actually. Uh, yeah, I, I would need to include that. So we could just come go back to to this one. Oh no. Those no big difference. So I'm going to save it and let's go. I hope you chose, as Dan suggested, final as your file name for saving it. And here in port, the one I just created. Yeah, yes, yeah, so there, um, there shouldn't be a parenthesis here. I hope it's not going That's to okay. mess. It is all good. And go ahead. Huh? Okay, let me make presenter. Share screen. Can you see my screen? Yes. Yep. Okay, cool. So let's uh, let me copy this taper. Uh, revert to. S oh no, this is a new project. So we'll close this one. Uh, no need to save. And we'll come over here. We'll get this guy. Drain. Okay. Um, That's a very, very cool. bad maybe. <laughs> so one uh, one thing I want to do before I drop in the shark, sorry everybody, uh, is I'm going to make the volume object uh, current state to object, so I get a polygonal version of it. I'm going to drag that up to the top here, and what I want is the the underneath the water surface. I want it the the lands to continue, you know, down um because right now it's just sort of like floating so i'm just going to drop in as a child a taper set it to negative y fit to parent um turn down the height go into my front view so i can see where it is because i want it basically like in that bottom half and then uh oops and then set that strength down like that and uh, let's see, let me press play there. 
So, you know, hopefully we could see it sort of fading into the water a bit. Um, but anyway, that's that's done. So now the shark, let's go, let's get it finally. Shark, here we go. So I'm actually gonna open this up. Uh, so I got to download it and it is done. So I'm gonna double click on that. It'll open up, open it up in a new project so that I can get this guy. Shark I'm secretly one. hoping it comes in absolutely um, massive. Okay. <laughs> and then just leave it like that. <laughs> That's brilliant, yes. Uh, paste, and it should, it actually should be uh, pretty big. So let's close this, let's come out of, let's go back to default camera. Um, let's see, we have the water surface, which I'll hide, and the ocean floor. There it is. Yes. It is. <laughs> it is, it is massive, you've got to leave it that size, yes. You've got to leave We're... it that size, yeah. <laughs> Not a problem. <laughs> Uh, what <laughs> yeah, it's it's looking way too sensible for us. <laughs> Needs to have just like a massive shot. <laughs> okay, so let's move tool. Good. Let's get this and got to move it. Whoa! <laughs> now we have a title, don't we? Jump the shark. Oh my gosh. All right. So that the main body team should be the show look in there every day. <laughs> okay, let's this material has not been none of these materials have been. So we got two materials here. Let's just double check there's no diffusion. Good. That's good for the eye. Uh all good. So I'll do a convert and replace for these guys. So create redshift tools, convert and replace. And just watching up here. Okay, yeah, that's when the final right. animation happens, well, when we reveal the shape of the S, then it's going to be like we planned the shark all along. But Sharon obviously knew what, what she was thinking about when she suggested the S. So I'm bringing it closer and hopefully into wow. Well, I although I I know that you are into like big sharks and Sharknado movies stuff like that. I I would still uh, <laughs> maybe into some big other. sharks. <laughs> Don't tell them. <laughs> Either it needs to be smaller, or we need a whole army of them. <laughs> oh, should we make an army of them? Oh, this is the tail fin that we're seeing. We're not seeing the. What's that? Ventral? What's what's that fin called? Anyone? Dorf, dorsal? Fin? I, mean, I know I'm into them, but I, I don't know. <laughs> I think it's dorsal fin. At least in the uh, in the fish Everyone's rig template, it's, it's called dorsal fin. Oh gosh, that is massive. Yeah. Okay, new title. Release the sharks. Uh, I just, I want to get it between these trees. I don't know, because then it's blocking the thing. Where should this be? Maybe if you if you adjust the anchor point of, of the whole shark to uh, close to the dorsal fin, so you can place it wherever you want and then just scale it. Cool. So that's... Let's, uh, oops, nope. let's go here. And where are we? Hypernerbs. And let's check this out. Hypernerbs. That means yeah. that this object has been created before Ellie was born. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Just been outed. <laughs> okay. I uh, just set the. Oh, no, I just did that for that one guy. Okay, that's fine. So we'll go L, we'll turn on snapping, and then we'll go about there. That'll do it. Turn off axis, turn off snapping, and. Yeah, now I can move that. Um, what? Um, wow, it is really big, isn't it? It's, it's I suppose you can make it smaller heavy. if you want to. No, can't do it. Already committed. I mean, I mean <laughs> let's just bring it down a bit. 
Just a smidge. Like with, like with any project, of course we've overrun. Deadlines are there to overrun. <laughs> is, is, aren't they? We'll get another they're, they're one. Consideration. They're not an instruction. Over here, and I want to scale this one down, but because it's an instance, I'm going to go to object mode. That'll allow me to scale it down so I can sort of get that into this little bit here, like right around here. Jonathan's suggesting an Aqualung air container in its mouth, um, just like the end of Jaws. Um, yeah, you know, the, I mean, I can tell it's a fin, but what do you guys think? What does it look like on that final okay. camera angle? Uh, this very angle? Oh, no, the, the final one. That, this is the start the, angle. Like, it's far out it's zoomed out so you can reveal the S and the, the rest of the island. Good question. Did uh, the analogy? Key, oh, it's not keyframed. Okay, that's fine. Let's go to the start. It's zero. Oh, this is cool too, because now you can see that sand going under the water. Mm -hmm. I will see the scale of the on the shot. Okay, so is now it... could you reframe it so you can see that actual fin in the shot? Uh, let's go to far shot camera, and. Come out a bit. Where? There it is. Mm. We probably want the sun in here, huh? Pretty cool. Oh, hey, it's cool. Ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we were going for. <laughs> uh, to get the, I, I'd like to have the sun in there too, but to get it, I feel like we're going to have this sideways S. Well, that could do that. Could all bit around a little bit. You could then that would totally work, yeah. But you know, uh, what you would usually do in a production shot, if, if the client says, hey, I want this sunset in the uh, beginning, and I also wanted, want to see it in the end, you would just animate the sun um, and get it in the right position. I mean, there, there's always like a, a small um, shift also in, in movies when it's, when it's dramatic, no matter what daytime, if you see like an army helicopter oh. flying, it's always sunset in the back. Oh, and so on. Uh. oh no. <laughs> did you save it? What an amazing way to end. <laughs> no, I did not. Um, it, was, it was scripted. There's yeah, a I'm, chance that it might save a recovery file, but here, yeah. someone else, someone else pick up the screen so I can, um, I can go through to see if it'll save the recovery file. What a bummer that is. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty uh, confused. We will we have the recovery file. Who who wants who wants the screen? Well, well I, Jonas I, took it. Cool. <laughs> I, I'm just going to to um. Do you want me to to recreate the shark shark thing? Well, do I have? If you wish. Ah, uh, you. You saved it again as another file, right? Yeah. You know, Let me. Yes. Here we go. A bomber. That's that. that's the new one. This one should already have the sunset in it. Here we go. Okay. Cool. So. <laughs> let me. Let me uh, again create that chart. Well. Now it's a little bit repetitive. Sorry for that, <laughs> but I want this. I want the shark to be in there. So I'm gonna go back. So by the way, this is the global menu. You can bring this up by pressing the shortcut V. And did you just say go. shark cut? The oh, shark. <laughs> I didn't. Oh, dollar in the jar. Again, absolutely. Is <laughs> here already? No, I did. Did I copy it? Copy and paste. There we go. Now it's there. Oh, come on. Light shading. 
here it is. I'm going to scale it down, move it over here. Oh, move it up. Well, maybe I'm going to reset transform. That's way down. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, I just saw a comment uh, from Sharon. She says, we're going to need a bigger boat. <laughs> Absolutely. From Jaws. Is that from Jaws? I think it's from Jaws. Love it. Here we yes. go. I think I also should have those two here. Create redshift uh, tools, convert and replace materials. Let's switch back to grow shading and then start the redshift IPR. Here we go. I'm going to save this so we have it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> what I'd like to do is after uh, we wrap up, I want to like sort of finish what I was thinking with under the water and uh, save that one too. You're going to have that to render it out. And like then a post credit scene. Yeah. Yes. We'll definitely share this as well in that folder, the Dropbox area. It's even German naming here. Mm. Yeah. Oh, let me make it's this other man disappear. Yeah. Cool. Um, <laughs> do you want me to finish in German? <gasps> That's yeah, the If Leonel's going to wrap up in in in, uh, in French. Yeah. <laughs> Cool. <laughs> Do we have any other languages we can we can speak? Uh, Hebrew. All right. Um, well, we've got the shark back. What was the the initial thing that I was supposed to do? Eyeballs. Hmm? You're going to put eyeballs around the coastline. Eyeballs. You know what? I I think. <laughs> I think I'm going to have a, a look at the output settings and um, a good idea. Lock the ratio and set it to full HD. And let's let's have a look at the render time for this one. Per frame, I'm going to save again. Well, now I don't have the um, the the, uh, the LUTs that Lionel had, but I'm just going to hit render and let's check. Uh, is your what? Save settings in 8 bit or 32? No, uh, I, I didn't change it. It's in 8 bit at the moment. Okay. But I think the, the render What's time the is quite. One? It's quite What's okay. It's... Sorry? What was that, Simon? What system are you on? Good question. Um, I'm on a MacBook Pro here, and I've got a Sonnet box connected to it um, with an eGPU, and the GPU in there is an AMD Radeon Pro. 5700. Well, hmm. W 5700. That's the name. Well, it looks pretty fast. I mean, it, yeah, it's, it is. Our term looks okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So here you see the problem that we have with, with 8 bits. Um, if I rendered a higher uh, depth, maybe this wouldn't be blown out as much. And if, if so, we could info, adjust it in compositing. If you go to the info in the picture viewer here, it says 8 bit. No, it's 32. Oh, 32 bits. Okay, cool. So then that's the, the 32 bits um, um, display, and we would need to adjust this later in comp. Also, a quick question, a question guys. In from, um, yes. Oh, oh, you got it. Yeah, I was about to ask, which, which of the Redshift versions um, did ACES first come in with? Was it 0.46? Yeah, for okay. six. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So right, I just right now, that, yeah, up, upgrade to three point zero point four six, and it has a. Or yeah, straight so to four right now we are at four eight, but uh, four six was the first one. Um, with ACES. Hats off to the developers uh, for for nailing this uh, implementation as they have, and the rapid releases that they uh, they got out after their initial one. It's it's really awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So here we don't see the uh, the ACs. Then the color profile is going to be applied at the end of the render. Oh, thank you. Cool. Well, 
So just another right. minute to wait. We'll see. <laughs> just a boot. We can just talk. We can talk for a minute. <laughs> All right, so well, I mean, I mean, in the in the in the meantime, we we can ask uh, people if if they uh, liked watching us uh, creating a shot like this, and uh, maybe if this is something I did. They, I they, liked it. Uh, like I to enjoyed see it a lot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> same, same. I loved it. But there's a question for you, Jonas. Can you uh, can you add more CPU and GPU to a MacBook Pro? So Good question. CPU, no. Well, you, you cannot add more CPU, but you can add more GPUs to the MacBook Pro. As far as I know, I mean it's it's uh, connected via Thunderbolt, and it should work. At, at least it should be possible to add another one Damn. because there are two Thunderbolt um, plugs in there. Um, so I, I what GPU plug. are you using, Jonas? I, I just said it. It's the AMD oh, sorry. Radeon um, <laughs> Pro W uh, 5700. Darren's not presenting. He's not listening. I'm like I'm zoning out on the reflections in the water. I'm just like, <laughs> oh, that's that's looking really nice. Yeah. Cool. You can't use eGPUs with M1s though. Although Cinema and Redshift are both M1. Enable or Apple Silicon enabled. Um, um, Apple Silicon machines themselves don't yet do eGB, eGPU support, do they? Well, I'm I'm not sure about the MacBook Pro. I I know that the, the MacBook Air with the M1 in it doesn't support eGPUs, but that's uh, down to Apple not wanting to support uh, Thunderbolt on um, on the MacBook Air, I think. So on oh, the MacBook Pro, they have Thunderbolt, and I think it's going to work, but uh, I'm not sure. So have I missed a MacBook Pro M1 release then? Well, the, the, they released one. the uh, 13 inch one was released along with uh, the Mac Mini and the, um, and the MacBook Air. And on the MacBook Air, this would take around eight minutes to render using the M1. Because I know that it's not even three times slower than uh, this uh, GPU that I'm using. So that's that's quite cool. Dean has or Jim, making that has everything it goes in. Sorry? Dean's making a suggestion that I've been thinking for a few minutes. This will look fantastic with a nice vintage treatment in Metabot, it looks. <gasps> oh, where's Max when you need him? <laughs> <laughs> All we right. Got, we got Since the next best thing. We got a Simon. Simon. <laughs> do you want to? We do have a Simon. Take this. Absolutely. Well, I... I can set the time. You, you can tell me what <laughs> I'm supposed to do with that. Oh, sorry, we're running out of time. No. Unfortunately, well, if we it are just finish it. 10 minutes sooner, then we, we would have been able to get to it. Yeah. Yeah. But of course, you, you can add uh, effects here in Magic Bullet Looks. And um, yeah. Is there anything in particular you want me to add? Let's just check out some of those preset looks because I know there's already uh, some really fantastic presets in there and the, yeah the cool thing here is that um, you can just hover over them and then you can see the result here that's really cool maybe modern indie happy is not the happy memory that one is quite cool i like this one because it's also tinting everything towards this um greenish or bluish color Tapping. Tapping. The yeah. that's nice. what does happy one? memories look like which one? Happy memories. Happy memories. Yeah. Yeah, it's also good. Oh, I really God like this know. one more because it's well. Actually, this is more like the the um, vacation mood when you are on an island. I think, except for the shark thing. <laughs> See, that oh makes it even better as a concept. <laughs> It's I, I want to go until you see the massive shark. Oh, yeah. I like the last one. But this, it's every awesome. time I, I see this, I just want to go through all of the looks. 
all mm. the categories and see each one because yeah it's quite it's quite impressive because there are like more than 200 presets in here that you can just use is that right is it more than 200 200 yes more than 200 dan's got a great comment about the fact that the shark fin now looks like a bit of a wind sail which is a, a nice yeah. touch mm -hmm. Mm, warm hole is not. Well, one. Maybe a yeah. bit too bright. I don't know. They're, they're all they're all nice. Well, I mean, the, the cool thing about uh, Magic Bullet looks and the presets is that you can use them as a starting point. I mean, it's not it's not. Or you can just bring the strength down so, as well, can't you? So yeah, you can either bring the overall strength down here. Well, I'm I'm in the S curve effect here, but um, well, actually, I would There's have a lot to do the contrast. If you don't have any selected, it should bring Sorry? down the strength. The whole chain. It should bring down the strength of the whole chain. Yeah. Oh yeah. Here we go. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Let me see what the duotone is doing, but I think it's creating these nice bluish um, edges here. So you can just hover over the upper right of any of these tiles here, and then you can switch it off and switch it back on again just to to create a comparison. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. In the end, just nice. click this one here, and then you've got the then you've got magic bullet looks applied to your render. Cool. Yeah, we better wrap things up because we've we've only gone over by fifty percent of times. So <laughs> we better yeah. tell you what we could we could do the the final animation and then we'll post it on the um, on the Maxon Twitter account. Good job, everybody. And we'll in fact also yeah, add it nice. into the folder. Yeah. Maybe we'll and then we'll add a hit. link to it on the on the youtube we'll add we'll add a link to the final render as well and we'll put that in the descriptions of the youtube recording yeah cool simon do you want uh, the screen again do you want to um, yes please show more stuff so here we go simon That's my make name. presenter here we go Fantastic. Excellent. Great. So, um, as Dina says, we need to make a camera move for the animation, of course. So that's an important thing that we'll add. But um, thank you for bearing with us. We've had loads of fun doing this. Um, and let us know if you would like us to do a similar thing on future sessions, if this has been useful. Also, for, to seeing that process, because it's quite interesting, just the the various options you've got and everyone weighing in with their art director eye, saying, no, no, do it this way, make the shark bigger. <laughs> so, and we'll, we'll the, here's where you can see more stuff. I'm just showing this page. This is the, the here we go, the events page on the maxon.net site. And although this was the last session in June, we have a new series of sessions coming up for July and we're looking at color correction and um, or in fact, ACEs as well as a as a major theme. So we're, we're taking that on board, the, the ACEs that have just been introduced into Redshift as well. And we're looking at how you can then do ACEs workflows with Magic Bullet inside Resolve and then how you can do other types of workflows um, across Premiere Pro as well and other hosts for the Magic Bullet tools. But we're also inviting in, excitingly, on the last session in July, um, the creative director, so the chief creative officer, I should say, of Maxon, Stu Maschwitz. And he's going to be talking to us about filmic effects and how Magic Bullet film was born. And then the, the relationship between our emotional response to film and technically how you can emulate that and that sort of thing. So we'll expect to see very soon here on the events page the links for that. And that's all through every Monday in July. So we're very excited by that. And we'll be by Max and by Diego and Tony as well. They'll be reprising their color correction team effort from a few months ago.
Fantastic. So, and we'll have more of these, more more stuff from Redshift Faces, and more other other things featuring cinema and the rest of the tools as well. So, thank you again. Thank you, Jonas, Ellie, Lionel, and Darren, for your creativity. <laughs> well, that's great. I enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. And we'll post this on the YouTube channel. Uh, just the um, just go to here. It is the Maxon training team on YouTube, and you should see this shortly. And we'll attempt to put the file, the actual end file that we get, and the animation that we've rendered, and share that with you via the description comments in there. Excellent. And thank you for all the nice words as well. <laughs> and thanks for letting us overrun. Again. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Thank, thank you. <laughs> Bye. Take care. See you on the next one. All right, cheers. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.